Science and Psychology of Sports. I'm Dr. Brett Levine, joined as always by Dr. Ben Rosenberg. Ben, is Barry Zito a first ballot Hall of Famer? 2012, baby. Won us that <laughs> title. I love, I love Barry Zito, but no, he's not a fucking first ballot Hall of That's Famer. Nor he's not a Hall of Famer, period. End of conversation. Let me, let me introduce our guest because we have a, a few more baseball questions, and he's certainly the person to talk to. Our guest today, Josh Kushnick, he is a self-proclaimed comedian, as well as a, a real-time sports agent. Josh, welcome to the show. Thank you. Okay, this is like every kid's dream. Either they want to be a secret agent or they want to be a sports agent. Is it exactly how we think it is? Is it like the you know the, the show Ballers? Yeah, no, when you make it, it is. It totally is. You know, TV also leaves out everything terrible. Which is a hmm. lot. It dwarfs all the good stuff. Good stuff is bleeding. Glad I got away with most of it. Even more awesome. You know, I'm doing it less now because I'm doing other things. But 38, I started when I was, I was the youngest certified agent in the history of the PA. I started when I was like 21. So That's crazy. I mean, it, it takes a lot out of you. you. You said there's amazing, fun aspects and also aspects that are shitty and hard. Like, what was the turning point? You, you, the world changes. Think different things are important. I don't like what the sport is right now. They're not going to listen to me about changing stuff. Probably a lot more impactful in, in what I do outside of it, I think. I've done all I can professionally. As, and someone like me who is very outwardly, I wouldn't say leftist, but I, I, I lean left. And, and now I would say I'm centrist. But I, I, in baseball, I'm a leftist. I'm a baseball leftist. Hmm. And it, it's very tiring being that in that game and I you know for me to be on a soapbox with not a lot of other people pointing out hey there hasn't been a black starting catcher since 2003 isn't that weird and everyone's like why is that you know or there's eight african-american pitchers in the big leagues like one point in time when I was working I represented four of them. Hmm. and it's like nobody ever like that is weird like all right but like somebody else should do something and no one did so I got tired of it and I mean the day-to-day of it's horrible it's a horrible experience you mentioned you've had good experiences, bad experience. Who do you who do you still represent? Uh, Carlos Aswahe, uh TJ House, who's with the Indians, he's a free agent now. Taylor Grover, her with the Yankees, he's going to play winter ball. Yeah, not, not a ton of guys anymore. I really downside this. Also, John Butcher Grass at ESPN. And <laughs> I, cannot, I cannot list their names, but I do work for one general manager at the big ones. Hmm. Interesting. As yeah, as the GM I, as the GM's agent. Yes. And I would love, I would love to to eventually move on from player representation and specialize in, in front office work. I I would love that. I mean, I make those calls anyway when guys get fired. I've already I signed a hundred big leaguers in my seven <sighs> year career. Wow. I worked for, I worked for like a thousand players. I was the Gonzo agent. Like Hunter S. Thompson, the gym was my hero. So yeah. I mean, I I actually think that's a good transition to the next thing we wanted to ask you about which is the recent news that the marlins hired the first female gm i know her you know her so we we wrote a psychology today piece that talked a little bit about conformity and some other psychology principles and how it's so important that one team basically had to do this right to break the conformity of all the other absolutely all the other so do you think that do you think that glass ceiling's been broken and i mean what yes. can you say about her yeah no absolutely 100 percent broken if you ask me if the Marlins' intentions were pure for that, do I believe that? No. I think in a, in a case like this, the ends just like who's it hurting? The ends justify the means, whatever. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I've heard the same pieces that she's overqualified. You know, yeah, no shit. Like she totally is, but whatever. I I don't know why. I mean, you got to understand something for a woman to go into an executive position in baseball from the beginning, like start from nothing to crawl your way up to GM. For a woman specifically in this environment, I mean, you got to have a crazy kind of resolve to go do that because it's hell. I, I'm there. I, I work, my, my vice president, again, is a woman. Hmm. She's one of like four women certified agents in all baseball. I see what my vice president goes through when she handles stuff professionally. With the glass ceiling with Kim, I mean, she's been a candidate for 15 years. And I've heard terrible stories that the reason that she got pushed right now to be the GM, this will be breaking news for you guys because I know shit, is that the commissioner's office didn't know what to do with her anymore. And you couldn't fire Kim Ng. So what do you do? I believe that story personally because I know hmm. the end result. 
again, no pure intentions. Here's baseball. The ends justify the means. Kim's going to be a damn star, and then now people won't be that worried about hiring women. There'll yeah. be no public fear, backlash. Other owners won't make fun of other owners, and it's it's always going to be harder because baseball's the the good old boy network, and it's real southern. Like I was getting at before with my views. Yeah. Oh boy, was that not welcome for baseball? <laughs> I wrote an article like seven years ago about gay rights in baseball, and I had a player who actually had a player get a World Series ring uh, a couple of years ago. Oh, man. Yeah, a guy who fired me got a World Series ring this year. Um, fired me because I wrote an article about how we can post about gay rights in baseball, and uh, he said about our lifestyles. I uh, did not uh, align. Uh, I could not stop laughing that he ended up on the Dodgers. <laughs> like, I'm fine in LA. I hope the Giants played here. <laughs> <laughs> You've, um, you, you, I think you've spoken a lot about, I think, some idealism to the league. You've talked about how the league used to be. We're now talking about gender equality. What's a, what does a, a, a Josh baseball league look like? Oh, super easy. I, that literally, that, that liberal utopia is that they would just hire the most qualified person for each position, and it wouldn't matter about you know any bloodlines or who you knew or where you worked or whatever your connections are. I mean, baseball is so insulated. They're very good at protecting their own. But I fervently believe that baseball has an inherent uh, race problem when it comes to scouting. It's what I alluded to before is uh, there wasn't a, there hasn't been an everyday black catcher since 20, uh, 2003. When I was working, there were 13 African-American pitchers. Remember David Eckstein? Mm-hmm. Remember how he got described by people? Gritty, hard-nosed winner? Yeah. yeah. Okay, top quiz, top quiz, on spot, real time. Tell me a black player that's scouted that way that's described as a hard nosed pretty winner. Never, never, never happens. I mean, the same shit happens in football with QBs, right? The right. way that they're exactly. described. Yeah. Except in baseball, it's every position. If you have a black kid who's a catcher or a pitcher, you get scouts that will legitimately say, hey, it's science. You're wasting their athleticism. You know, screw the kid. It doesn't matter if he's great at catching or, you know, you're Jeremy Jeffers. It's like, hey, why are you pitching? You could be playing center field. Why are you mm-hmm. playing shortstop? You could play center field. Every day. You think a white kid's going to get this every day? Interesting. What can MLB do to combat this? I mean, you said it's systemic. No it's inherent. I have no idea. I mean, you hear bullshit excuses. I'm sure you've heard this. Inner city kids don't like baseball yeah. because, what, it's expensive. Okay, right. like, Dominican, Dominican kids figured it out, right? Like, so that's bullshit. Or they like other sports. Well, that's racist. Yeah. That's my point. With baseball is that that culture has been robbed of baseball for really long time. Like, we didn't have black guys in 1947. I don't know what they can do for more inclusion. You have black players in the big leagues right now, Dexter Fowler and Hayward, they're very vocal, or Adam Jones before he left, that are, are streaming this stuff. I mean, I'm yeah. a random ass white Jewish guy. You have those guys screaming, like, this is messed up, and no one's doing anything. Yeah. Baseball's done nothing. I don't get it. Yeah. I wish they would. I, it's like, I'm not saying they don't care. There's people in the office who definitely care, but like, again, it's, it's insurmountable, like, on, on its own, like, it's just you gotta hope for uh, like we we're talking about centrism. You gotta hope for incremental change, and it just yeah. you hope it sticks. I think that yeah. the we find this across a lot of industries with this kind of diversity and equity and inclusion initiatives, right? Like there's a lot of lip service around things. There's a lot of talk about what would look good and what we should be doing. And right. often there's less action because maybe people don't know what to do or we're reliant on incremental change, like you said, and it's just. It's really fucking hard work to put it bluntly. And a lot of times people don't have the the wherewithal or the care to really put in the work necessary. Well, you just, you look at what happened with the White Sox with Tony La Russa, and it's just like, what the fuck? Like, what do you call that yeah. other than massive levels of white privilege? Like, what yeah. do you call that? Like, what is that other than that? Yeah. Like, like you, this guy got a D, like, you just juxtapose it on. Like, what if that was Ron Washington? Yeah. Over. Done. The team still don't understand is if, if you, you have three black kids in an organization, it's just it's just very isolating for, for those guys to go through that minor league baseball. What has been expressed to me and, and what I have, have seen as an agent, even if they wouldn't, the clients I have worked for, I'm not saying they is everybody, but like the clients I yeah. specifically work for, they would tell you mostly what I'm saying I hope is true. But even if they didn't notice it themselves, because I absolutely have guys that would tell you that your face, like, I've never experienced racism ever. And I'll look at them like, as this stupid ass white guy. And they like, dude, I have that level of grace to just let it roll off the mic. It's amazing. Like, there are guys that really just don't let it bother them publicly. Mm. It's just, oh, 
I'll make the point about JJ because I worked with him the longest. To watch that happen, even like randomly with fans in the crowd, or like one, you know, even if he overhears it once, like again, he it might roll off him, but like I know, and and I also know my other clients don't have to deal with that. I think um, you know, along the lines, hopefully along the lines of, of signing Kim Ng with the, the uh, Marlins, that there's precipitous change across the league in general in terms of race relations and everything that it, the country is going through now as well. So I think at least we have an idea of where we need to be and of, you know more attention of what the problems might be. Speaking of problems with baseball, this uh, Hall of Fame ballot came out. Also, strangely, at the same time, there was news of Robinson Cano getting his second offense with steroids and a bunch of guys on the, on the hall of fame ballot, um, namely Barry Bonds and some others who are still sitting there. So question for you, I think, I, I guess with us being Giants fans is, is Barry Bonds going to make it this year or Here, here's my, here's my hot take. I think up until Robbie Cano getting his suspension, Bonds was going to get in. And then everyone just hmm. remembered how bad steroids were. Hmm. I think it's going to completely derail Bonds and Clemens. And mm. I think Schilling, unfortunately for my brain, Schilling will probably get in, which yeah. I, hate, I hate I hate life. But, you know, it's good knowing Aubrey yeah. Huff's not going to work in baseball anymore. I grew up in the 90s. I know all the sports writers in our age bracket. I'm 38. I don't know how you can erase an entire era when everybody was cheating and that the guys who weren't cheating may still have been cheating. And, and even if they weren't, they were all good little players. Like, who knows? Like, we're never going to know. And unless you ban the whole era, I think, I don't know what you do. I, am I am I in the camp that lets Barry Bonds in and, and Sosa and McGuire, and then you, you have an asterisk, like these guys juiced when it wasn't illegal? I'd be all right with that. I don't know how you keep them out of the museum. But again, I'm one of the guys that, with the steroid guys, it's tough because it messed up an era completely. Messed up the history of stats, which pisses me off as a purist. Mm. But at the same time, those are the numbers. So for me, if you're going to put in guys that have suspected ties to steroids like Pudge and Bagwell. And again, I don't want to like dive into this, but I'm already a social justice warrior in this video. But like Sammy Sosa, like falling off the ballot, getting 2%, whatever. And McGuire getting a higher percentage. It seems like the most racist thing in the world to me. Like everyone pretends Sosa didn't hit 600 home runs. Like that automatically gets you in the Hall of Fame. Like there should not be a debate. If he wasn't on steroids, he'd yeah. be a Hall of Famer. In fact, McGuire had 1,700 hits and would not be a Hall of Famer. Yeah, without the home run. So I, whatever. I, I am a history nerd with baseball, despite not caring who wins and loses now. But to touch on Cano real quick after. So I think Bond should get in. I said all the writers are going to be self-righteous and sanctimonious and, and, you know, take the steroid stance. Like, these are bad. We can't vote for them. And, and you know, while still, like, winning the MVP. This has, been, this has been quite the experience, dude. Thanks so much for joining us. Yeah, I will say one last thing for you guys. If you want to do a yeah. more serious thing. One subject we need to touch on eventually when he takes time with is that every ball club has something called an EAP, and it's mandated by baseball, and each team basically is a team psychologist. Now, every team has a different relationship, but that one specific team, the Brewers, employed a traveling EAP, and they're the only team to do it. I guarantee you that team had the best mental health in any ball club I've ever seen. That was the team that made it in 2018. You know when Yelich got there in the year? So they had an EAP there that year, and the guy played golf with the players, and hmm. the family issue, and the team never knew about any of it. And, I, and I'm telling you, if other ball clubs did that, things would be better. That's awesome, man. We brought that up before. We have, we've had guests that have advocated for it in, in different yeah. sports. But the Milwaukee come Brewers are the best mental health advocates in all baseball, by far, in my opinion. Hmm. Because last, last point I'll make for you with that is Jeremy Jeffress. Same, they saved his life. You know, every every time he left, he struggled. Other than this year, he seems fine now. I know his age now, but well, up until we got situated with the Brewers, you know, he bounced around. He had his issues, been suspended. The Brewers stuck by him. They did amazing work with him. When he got traded to the Texas Rangers, they did not have an on staff guy that knew anything about him. And two weeks later, he got DUI with possession of marijuana and had to go back to rehab. And then they got rid of him, sent him back to the Brewers. Then he was an all star. So huh. that tell you the impact of mental health in baseball. Where yeah. instead of putting up a hotline or saying you should talk to someone, if teams actually put in the investment with their players at a young age and destigmatized it, it would be a lot better for everybody else. So I just want to make sure we talk. Preach. Love it. Preach, man. Preach. Right, we're applicable. We, we really appreciate the reviews. Thanks as always to our editing team for putting today, together today's show. 
You can find us on Twitter at Head Game Psych. You can find me on Twitter at Dr. Brett Levine. You can find Mac at PhD. And thanks for tuning in.